Hello guys and welcome to another episode of my lecture. On today's episode, we will be talking about other rules in relation to admissions. We've had series of classes on admissions and this, by the grace of God, is going to be our last class on admissions before we move into a new topic which is on presumption of fact and presumption of law. Now, in my last class, I talked about liability X as against A admissions. And now we go into this particular lecture. Now, note that ignorant admissions or admissions made on basis of misapprehended facts are not binding admissions. In the case of Akba Buyo versus Duke, the court held that it is settled law that admissions are not estopel and therefore are not conclusive against any party whom they attended. Such a party always has a right to prove the circumstances or to show that they were due to erroneous conception of law or ignorance of real facts. Informal admissions do not strictly bind the maker and may be explained or contradicted. The weight of an informal admission depends on the circumstances under which it is made and these circumstances may be proved to impeach or enhance the credibility. As we can see, in the case of Ado Ibrahim versus Edelstein Nigeria Limited, an admission does not conclusively prove a fact in issue. The admitting party is at liberty to adduce or rely on rebutting evidence. The court is also empowered to request the adverse party to prove the facts in issue independently of the alleged admission. Thus, in section 27 of the Evidence Act and section 123 of the Evidence Act, when you read them together, it says admissions are not conclusive proof of matter admitted provided that the court may in its discretion require the facts admitted to be proved otherwise than any such admissions. A provision similar to section 27 of the Evidence Act was interpreted by the Supreme Court in the case of Heidemann v. Musa. The court held that while evidence may be called in rebuttal of alleged admission, in some case, the party allegedly making the admission is stopped or prohibited from offering a rebuttal evidence. It is tried law that where a party is stopped from asserting a contrary position, such a party is deemed to have admitted a position. Now, to basically understand this particular rule, the rule that says that admissions are not conclusive proof, you have to know that this particular rule on admission is like two sides of a sword that does not have an handle. Just imagine that it is two sides of a sword without an handle. Do you know why I said that? Because it can be used by both parties. Now, admission is not conclusive proof. Yeah. Now, if A versus B are in a particular court proceeding and A is saying that B has admitted to a certain thing and brought evidence to the court, the courts can now say that, okay, A you are the one that said that B has admitted. Outside this particular admission, I want you to still prove this fact in issue. The court can independently say that. That is the reason that we need to read two positions together. The first one is section 27 and the second one is section 123. Like I said, in section 27 and section 123, when read together, you see that admissions are not conclusive proof of the matter admitted provided that the court may need discretion require the fact admitted to be proved otherwise than any such admission do you understand that and at the same time the court can say b you cannot deny this admission without telling a to prove for that the court can say that's why i said that it's like a cutlass without you know the the handle and so the both mouths are sharp at the two ends so b the court can say b you do not have the right to rebut this admission. This admission has been tendered against you and is admissible. And that's why we look, need to look at the case of Ehi Dimen versus Musa, which is our authority. Do you understand that? So when you're talking about admission not being a conclusive proof, that is also a very important rule. 
the fact that something has been admitted against the party is not conclusive, which is one distinguishing factor between admission and confessions. Once a confession has been tendered into evidence, I already told you when I was treating a, a confession that once a confession has been tendered into evidence, the prosecution just needs to close its case. The prosecution does not even need to do anything. It has been validly admitted to be voluntary and reliable. That is the end. The prosecution does not need to prove anything. But admission is not like that. Admission is not a conclusive proof. So which means that when something has been admitted, yes, that in tilts in the favor of the person who admitted it and against the party whom it was admitted. But the fact that it tilts in your favor does not mean that, number one, the court cannot tell you to bring other proof in support of that fact in issue to which you are bringing the admission. Number two, regardless of the fact that there has been an admission, the court will still have to look at all the other factors in the case before the court gives a judgment. Do you understand? And then looking at it from the other side, also, when there has been an admission, the court can tell B, you cannot rebut this admission. Sometimes, you can bring evidence to rebut admission. So, when you are bringing an admission before the court, it is even very advisable that when you are bringing admission before the court also bring surrounding evidence that can reinforce the admission so that when b wants to rebut the admission those surrounding evidence can kick against b's rebuttal that is when the court is not coming to play when the court is coming to play is when the court is telling a to bring more evidence or telling b that b should shut up there is no rebuttable evidence but when the court is not coming to play the court is silent a who is a good lawyer should know that when you are bringing an admission, bring surrounding evidence. Don't just bring an admission to court and say, my lord, ah, there's admission before this court, oh. you know, if you do uh, any other thing, you have to give judgment on this admission. Mm -mm. Because it's not conclusive proof. And also, the fact that there has been an admission, when B is given the opportunity, he can rebut the admission. Now, wala go day. So in order to avoid any such wala, just help yourself. Bring the admission, which is very good, Yes, bring surrounding evidence and try to also argue as A. Try to argue as A that B cannot bring rebuttable. Although the court can argue against you and say no, B can bring rebuttable. But try to argue that B cannot. That he has made an admission and he should not try to rebut it. Do you understand? Now, if you are the lawyer for B, A has brought admission. Except A did not bring other surrounding circumstance. If he didn't do that, then you know that you have to rebut the admission. If he did that, then you say calm down. Now try to rebut each of the admission of A. All the surrounding circumstances that he has brought in relation to that admission to prove a fact in issue. Try to cancel each of them. Once you can cancel it, then it then retilts to your favor. That balanced scale, which tilts to A's favor based on the admission, then retilts to your favor. But you then have a problem, like in the case of Ehidime versus Musa, where the court held that in some case the party allegedly making the admission is stopped or prohibited from offering a rebuttal evidence it is trite law that when a party is stopped from asserting a contrary position such a party is deemed to have admitted a position so if this is the case then i'm sorry there's nothing you can do the court has already stopped you do you understand that for, for you to further understand can you read the case of omishori versus aregbe shola and also the case of apc and Einek? 2015, the case of Kayili and Yibok 2015, the case of Effet and Ain 2011, and the case of Elfaren versus Uweka 2013. And with this, we rounded up our class on admissions and confessions. And I hope that you understand. I hope that with this, when you are facing evidence exam first semester as a University of Lagos student or as any faculty student, you will be able and you'll be better prepared to answer that particular section in your exam. I am very, very confident. If you follow the rules in my lecture, this particular section on confession and admission, you should answer it brilliantly because I know you're a brilliant student. Now, in my next class, I'll be talking about presumption of law and presumption of fact. And I would love that you continue with this energy which you have used to get to this particular level of my lecture make sure that you continue the whole of the syllabus like this and definitely you would pass exceedingly well i will see you in my next class